Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Off the Shelf. Today we're going to be talking about cookbooks. It's November, so we've got the holidays coming up, um, and this is the time of year that a lot of people are focused on food and entertaining, and though this year looks a little bit different, we might not be meeting in such big groups as we have in the past. It's still a time to really enjoy traditional seasonal foods. So I picked a selection of cookbooks with holiday food in mind, um, and let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got. We're gonna start out with drinks because in my opinion, no holiday dinner is complete without some fun drinks. We have this book called Quench, which has a fun combination of alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks. There's homemade soda recipes, and um, then like cocktails, shrubs that you could mix either with non-alcoholic or alcoholic components. So it's got a, a good variation on that. Um, I, something that I really like about cookbooks is all the really pretty pictures. So like check out this hot chocolate picture here. Don't you want that hot chocolate with those homemade marshmallows? I like that's what sells me on a cookbook, right? So if you're looking for some fun um, drink recipes with some good variety, Quench is is definitely one to check out. Another one along the same lines, but alcoholic is Death and Company. Uh, this book is going to be a rabbit hole for some of you. There's so many cocktail recipes in this book. When I went through it trying to pick a few that I could highlight for you guys, it was just like one after the next. Um, something to be aware of with this one though is that the recipes are really specific about what kind of alcohol um, they call for. So it doesn't just call for a gin, it calls specifically for like a beef eaters gin. Um, obviously you can do whatever you want if you've got something else on hand or you don't like a specific type of alcohol, you can certainly change it up. But they um, talk about how they created the recipes to very specifically match the flavor profiles of certain alcohols. There is a section in this one where they talk about um, creating specific or like new um, cocktails and they give you some sort of criteria to keep in mind when you do that. But again, there's some really awesome pictures. Check out this one. That's cucumber on top. Um, so if you're looking for a deep dive into cocktail recipes for your holiday season, Death & Co. Is, is the way to go. This book is awesome if that's what you're looking for. Now we're gonna move on to the food itself. I'm gonna start out with the sides. And this is Vegetables Illustrated from Cooks Illustrated. Um, just the cover is gorgeous. Look at all those pretty vegetables. And if you're like me, you have a lot of recipes that you make every year for the holidays and they're ingrained in your memory. They're very specific and probably not super healthy. I don't know. My favorite Thanksgiving recipe, for example, is um, mashed sweet potatoes with melted marshmallows on top. I have to have it, otherwise it's not Thanksgiving, right? You're not gonna find something like that in, in this book, but if you are looking to shake up your vegetable sides um, for the holidays or really any time, this is an awesome book to do that with. Cooks Illustrated and America's Test Kitchen do a really good job of outlining all the steps of a recipe, why something's gonna work or why it, like, why it might not work. So you really learn a lot about cooking from their books and there's just some gorgeous stuff in here. Let me show you a couple of things that I marked. Oh, and I really like vegetables. If you don't like vegetables, that's gonna be kind of a downfall for you here. Um, this is their green bean casserole, which I know is another traditional um, dish 
for Thanksgiving in particular. So if you always do canned green beans, um, canned cream and mushroom soup, maybe check out this cookbook and, and try their version. I haven't tried their version, but it looks amazing. Uh, the other really cool thing about this book is that it's broken down by vegetable. So all of the green bean recipes are together. All of the radish recipes are together. So if you know that you're looking for a recipe for a specific type of vegetable, you're gonna find all those recipes in one place. So vegetables, this one. This is, this is my number one recommendation if you're looking for vegetables. Next up in the same frame, sort of, is vegan holiday cooking from Candle Cafe. So you may not be vegan, you may not even know anyone who's vegan, but even if you're not, something really great about vegan cookbooks is that it gives you a different frame of reference for cooking without meat or dairy. And, you know, we're all trying to be a little bit healthier, so sometimes it, it's worth it, even if you're not vegan, to, to be able to put yourself in a different frame of mind, to be able to see a new way to use ingredients that you always make the same way. And so this one gives you some traditional flavors of the holidays, but done vegan. So there's, um, oh, where's the really pretty? Like this is a braised cranberry orange tofu. And I know some of you are like, oh my God, tofu. Tofu is awesome because it takes on the flavor of whatever you put with it. So it's not like, you know, beef that already has its own flavor to it and then you have to complement that flavor. Tofu is, is pretty much a blank slate. So something like that would be an awesome thing to try out or maybe you have um, family members or friends that are newly vegan or, or trying to go more plant-based. Definitely check out a vegan cookbook like this one to give you some good ideas on, on how to make some of those more traditional flavors in a um, plant-based way. Then, obviously, for the holidays, most of us think turkeys and roasting. So this book is all about roasting, a new approach to the classic art. And I'm, look at this cover, like, oh, if you eat meat, you, you wanna eat this cover, basically, this is amazing. So this book is exactly what it says. It tells you all about roasting. There's an entire section, it's about 10 pages long on roasting a turkey and um, all the different components with that from uh, removing the giblets to how to make sure that the thighs are browning at the same rate as the breast and um, how to carve it. It's all in here. And then um, there's also one on roast goose. And if, like me, you think of Charles Dickens, when you think of roast goose, maybe you wanna try it out. Here's some roast goose for you here. I don't know, I always feel like I'm in a Dickens um, book when I read about roast goose. So if you're looking for some tips and tricks on roasting um, for the holidays or any time, all about roasting is gonna really put your game up a level. And something a little more local is Tasting Pennsylvania. And this one is not really holiday specific. Um, it's got breakfast, lunch, and dinner kind of options, but they're from different restaurants and inns and things like that all across the state. So if you're looking for something more regionally Pennsylvania, this is gonna be an awesome one to check out. There is a breakfast recipe in here that I desperately want to make. It's stuffed pumpkin French toast. There's not a picture, which makes me sad, but I stuffed pumpkin French toast. I mean, come on. That sounds unbelievable. There's also, of course, um, a Moravian sugar cake recipe in here. There's an English toffee pudding recipe. So if you're looking for more Pennsylvania cuisine for your holidays, or again, anytime, tasting Pennsylvania is a great choice for that. Now we're moving on to desserts. I know for me, holidays are all about, well, Thanksgiving anyway, is all about the sides and the desserts. So first up, cookies. We have this little one called Holiday Cookies, which is adorable. 
and it's got a fun variety of different types of things um, from shortbread and butter cookies to the Linzer cookies like you have on the cover here and graham crackers um, but all in this little format so it's it's centered around the types of cookies that you might eat during the holidays if you need more cookie than that i'm going to recommend the perfect cookie from america's test kitchen like i said before america's test kitchen does an amazing job of telling you why something is going to work or not work depending on different variables. So there's um, a section in here about cookies that are made with butter versus shortening versus oil, and they show you pictures of how they come out differently based on what you put in them. So not only are there a ton of cookie recipes in here, like every cookie you could possibly need, but they're gonna tell you how to make them the perfect way. So you're never gonna have a weird flat cookie or like a weird puffy cookie, right? They're gonna be perfect every time. And let me tell you, these cookies look amazing. Oh, I opened up to fairy gingerbread, which does not, is not the most exciting picture ever. They look like graham crackers. Um, but how about this? Ultra nutty pecan bars. That sounds amazing, right? Especially if you're already a fan of pecan pie, I bet you an ultra nutty pecan bar is gonna be right up your alley. So if you're looking for cookies and bars and, and you could use um, some tips on how to make them even more amazing, get the perfect cookie and start baking and maybe bring some by the library, we wouldn't mind. We'll, we'll test them out for you. Next up we have one called Winter Sweet, which I saw this, this pavlova on the cover and I was like, ooh, meringue, yes. We have to talk about this book just because the, <laughs> the meringue on the cover. Uh, Winter Sweet is an entire dessert book centered on um, winter flavors. So you've got citrus and pomegranate and then the warm like cinnamon and nutmeg sort of flavors. That's what you're gonna find in this book. And so if you're looking for something seasonal that's really the way to go. Cranberry cobbler, I mean, come on. Here's a coconut sunshine cake. That looks awesome. And I think, let me find you this, this other picture because I saw this picture and went, this is the holidays. They're sugared cranberries. I love cranberries and this time of year I am like, all about cranberry flavored anything and I absolutely want to make sugared cranberries now because those look amazing so if you like me are all about the winter flavors right now winter sweet is gonna be like your top pick and then I know I know I haven't said anything about pie holidays and pie they go hand in hand I have two pie books for you because I could not just pick one the first one is pies and tarts and again, the cover got me right away. I was like, yes, please. That looks amazing. It's strawberry, it looks like. Then, how about this? It's a maple pumpkin pie. So it's not just pumpkin. They're also throwing the maple in there to get you extra, like, festive and amazing. There's shoe fly pie. There's um, a creamy maple tart. There's ricotta tarts. This boiled apple cider custard. That sounds awesome. You reduce the, the apple cider down and then you mix it in with a custard and you bake it. Yes, 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 yes. So if you're looking for some pies, pies and tarts is a good one for you. But like I said, I couldn't just pick one pie book. There's a second one. The second one is Magpie. Um, I actually own this book. And so when I went to pick out pie books, I was like, oh, I need to grab Magpie. And then I was like, well, maybe I'm being biased. Just because I own the book doesn't mean it's the best pie book, but this is an awesome pie book. The cool thing about this one is that it's not just sweet pies. Um, the front section is sweet pies, but the entire back section is savory pies and pot pies and things like that. So if you're looking for sweet and savory, this one is an awesome option for you. Again, let me find you just a couple of pretty pictures because that's what cookbooks are all about in my opinion. Here's one for you. There's the ginger snap crust that you can make to go on with your pie. I guess put your pie in. 
Is that how you'd say that? But they have it going along with a lemon ginger snap pie, which that sounds amazing. And ginger snaps are like a fall festive favorite. Say that five times fast. Um, or you go back to your cranberry with cranberry curd mini meringue pies. Look at that, it's adorable. It's like a little cupcake, but with meringue on top. So, like I said, this one is um, awesome for a mix of sweet and savory. It has a different selection from pies and tarts, so definitely if you are all about the pies right now, you could check them both out. They're, first of all, there's no one stopping you. Get all the pie books if you want and, and try all the pies. But uh, Magpie is gonna be an awesome selection for you if you're looking for pies. And then I have one more that is not a cookbook, but is still in the food theme, and that is pumpkin. And this is a cultural history of pumpkin in America. Um, so while you're you know, making and eating your pumpkin pies this season, you might be wondering how pumpkin came to be associated with the holidays here in the U.S. Um, and maybe why pumpkin is, is so tied to our holiday identity. Um, it's definitely not the case everywhere else in the world. Pumpkin is, is a recipe that is used in other food cultures uh, throughout the year. But here, you know, it's very specific. October through December, basically, is when we eat pumpkin, and that's it. So if you're interested in a cultural history of pumpkin here in America, definitely check this out, and you can learn a little bit about what you're eating and why. So that's it for today. Obviously, there are so many more cookbooks in our collection that you could go through. Um, I tried to pick ones that were more specific to the holidays, since that's where we're at this right now. Um, but there's there's weeknight meal cookbooks. There's ones for specific dietary needs. There's ones aimed um, specifically at different like ethnic food groups. Um, so if you want to cook Indian food or Mexican food or Thai food or, or some fusion of those, there's a bunch of them that are fusion cookbooks, definitely come and check out our cookbook section. There's a ton of them to go through. You can have a lot of fun diving into, into that section in our library. So um, if you have a favorite cookbook, please let us know in the comments down below. I, I know for a lot of people, there's not just one that's a favorite. There's like a whole collection that are maybe a favorite. So let us know what it is that you love. If you are looking for more recommendations, as always, you can go to our website and um, put in a personalized recommendation request form, give us a little bit of information about what you like, what you're looking for, and we'll send you back a list of items that we hope you'll enjoy. That's all for us today. We'll be back with another video soon. Enjoy your November, stay safe, and we'll see you at the library.